What's up? Let's go ahead and continue with our peripheral nervous system. Previously, we've covered the cervical plexus, the brachial, the lumbar, and the sacral plexus. The next thing that we're going to talk about now are nerves that are located within the thoracic wall, the thoracic nerves, we call them. So here we see the plain anterior view of the thorax. We can see the coastal bones, the sternum, and the vertebrae. The intercoastal space is the space between the ribs, as you see here. There are 11 spaces on each side, and they are numbered according to the rib, which is the superior border of the space. So, first intercoastal space under the first rib, second intercoastal space under the second rib, and so on. It goes all the way down to the 11th, so we got 11 intercoastal spaces. Now, the thoracic spine has 12 nerve roots. So from T1 all the way down to T12, there are nerves that go out from the spine on each side, similar to the rest of the spine. The anterior root of the nerves in the thoracic region branch off and control both the motor and the sensory signals in the thoracic and the abdominal wall. These nerves leave the thoracic spine, and therefore they're referred to as thoracic nerves. So we got one nerve that run underneath each rib, and are numbered according to each rib that they go underneath, as you see here. If these thoracic nerves run within the intercoastal space, they'll get the name intercoastal nerves. So we got 11 intercoastal nerves, since we got 11 intercoastal spaces. The last nerve that run underneath the 12th rib is referred to as a subcoastal nerve. So in this video, we're first going to go detailed into the intercoastal nerves. We'll talk about their cores and branches, and a traditional division of them called typical and atypical intercoastal nerves. Then we will talk a little bit about the subcoastal nerve so that we cover all the thoracic nerves that are relevant to know regarding the peripheral nervous system. Awesome! So, course, how do the intercoastal nerves go? Here we see a, a plain anterior view of the thorax along with the intercoastal muscles. If we now cross over the thorax like this, right over the ribs, then take away the upper part, and schematically draw what we can see from this view. What we now can see is a vertebrae, let's say T6, the 6th thoracic vertebrae, and the sternum. In the intercoastal space, the most external muscle is called the external intercoastal muscle. And remember, unlike the other two intercoastal muscles, the external intercoastal muscle does not retain its muscular character all the way to the sternum. And so the tissue that's left towards the sternum is called the anterior intercostal membrane, or the external intercostal membrane. Then we got the posterior intercostal membrane, or the internal intercostal membrane, from where the internal intercostal muscle come from. Then a little more internally, you know, we're at T6, so we might see the subcostal muscles. We can see the innermost intercostalis, which uh, comprise the third and the deepest layer of the intercoastal muscles. They're located deep to the internal and the external intercoastal, filling all the 11 intercoastal spaces between the ribs. And then more anteriorly, we have the sternocostalis muscle. And then if you move a little more internally, you might find the parietal pleura. All right, let's now add the spinal cord. I'm gonna test your knowledge now. Off from the spinal cord comes two nerves that unite. These are called the dorsal root and the ventral root. They unite and form the spinal nerve. The spinal nerve gives off a branch called dorsal ramus, which carries information that supplies muscle and skin sensations of the back. They're also connected to the sympathetic chain ganglion through the gray and white remi communicants. And then we got the anterior division. And the anterior division of the thoracic region T1 to T11 are called intercoastal nerves. So let's go ahead and gray out all the other nerves. The intercoastal nerves enter their corresponding intercoastal space between the posterior or the internal intercoastal membrane and the parietal pleura, and then they run anteriorly towards either the sternum or the rectus abdominis muscle. The upper six goes to the sternum and the lower six goes towards the rectus abdominis muscle. The typical intercoastal nerves are mixed nerves, carrying both motor and sensory innervations to the thoracic and the abdominal wall. The motor branches for the intercoastal muscles 
are branches that supply regional muscles. So the intercostal nerves supply all the intercostal muscles, as well as muscles like the subcostal muscles, the serratus posterior superior, levator costorum, and the transversus thoracic muscles. The cutaneous branches are called the lateral cutaneous branches, which further divide into the anterior and the posterior branches, and the anterior cutaneous branches, which also divide into the medial and the lateral branches. These branches supply segmental sensory innervation to the skin of the anterior lateral walls of the thorax and the abdomen. And you know, you can use this dermatome map to see the sensory distribution of each dermatome across the body. And so a dermatome refers to an area of the skin in which the sensory nerves derive from the spinal nerve root. The dermatomes related to the thorax and the abdomen are T1 to T12 anteriorly. Um, each is quite evenly spaced, with T1 and T6 being nearly horizontal lines that extends over the thoracic wall, while dermatomes T7 to T12 start horizontally in the thoracic wall, but anteriorly they tend to dip inferiorly uh, and then extend into the abdominal wall. And now you might be wondering why I'm showing you this. Well, this type of mapping is a useful clinical way to localize lesions and damage or injury to specific spinal nerves. So if you get a patient in which you suspect damage to the spinal cord, you can try to localize where the damage is by checking uh, which dermatome the patient doesn't feel any sensation at. All right. So that was the motor branches and the sensory branches. Another branch that we should talk about here are the collateral branches. Each intercostal nerve give a collateral branch and they arise close to the angle of the rib and course along the superior border of the inferior rib to innervate the intercostal muscles, uh, parietal pleura and the periosteum of the ribs. And if we take a segment of the thoracic wall, you can see that the intercostal nerves run in the so-called neurovascular bundle, located in the coastal groove right underneath each rib, between the internal intercostal muscle and the innermost intercostal muscle. And you know, it's called neurovascular bundle, so we got vessels here as well. And they're arranged as vein, artery, and nerve, from the most superior to the most inferior. An easy way to remember this is to use the mnemonic fan. And notice how the collateral neurovascular bundle runs at the lower edge of the space and the order is reversed. So we first have the nerve, artery, and then vein from superior to the inferior. You've probably heard about a procedure called thoracosynthesis or pleural tap. This procedure is done to evacuate fluid from the pleural space. And to do so, you have to put a needle right above the superior margin of a rib this ensures that the needle passes through the lower part of the intercostal space, avoiding the intercostal neurovascular bundle. That's why it's important to know the exact anatomy of the intercostal space so that you reduce the risk of complications while sticking needles in the patient's thorax. All right, so we've covered the course, we've covered the branches. Now, although the majority of the intercostal nerves follow a similar pattern from origin to course and branches, there are some differences among them, and these differences are why we sometimes divide the intercostal nerves into typical and atypical intercostal nerves. The main reason for this division is that the typical intercostal nerves course only in their own intercostal spaces, while the atypical nerves go beyond the thoracic wall to supply other regions. So the term typical refers usually to the third, fourth, fifth, and the six intercostal nerves, while the rest are considered atypical. So first and the second intercostal nerve, as well as the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh intercostal nerve. All right, so first intercostal nerve. The first nerve is special. It's special because the anterior ramus of the first thoracic spinal nerve terminates by bifurcating around the neck of the first rib into two branches superior and the inferior. The larger superior branch exits the thoracic cavity and joins the brachial plexus, as you see here, while the inferior branch, also known as the intercostal branch, becomes the first intercostal nerve. This nerve goes within the first intercostal space below the rib 
and ends as the first anterior cutaneous branch on the anterior chest wall. And note that we still have the collateral branch and the lateral cutaneous branch. The second intercostal nerve has exactly the same branches as all the other nerves, except that the lateral cutaneous nerve is longer. It's longer, so it's referred to as the intercostal brachial nerve. So the intercostal brachial nerve is a lateral cutaneous branch of the second intercostal nerve that supplies a sensations to the skin of the axilla. So it leaves the second intercostal space at the mid axillary line and then pierces the serratus anterior muscle to enter the subcutaneous tissue of the axilla. A little fun fact about this nerve is that it's also called the tickle nerve given it supplies the skin of the axilla. Then we got all the other nerves right here. We got intercostal nerve number 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. These nerves also enter and run in their corresponding intercostal spaces while still providing supply for the thoracic wall and the intercostal muscles. However, after they've run in the intercostal spaces, the nerves course behind the coastal margin into the abdominal wall, where it terminates as the anterior cutaneous branches. These intercostal nerves supply skin and muscle of this region, as well as the parietal peritoneum, and since they innervate both the thoracic and the abdominal wall, these nerves are referred to as atypical, and also sometimes referred to as the thoracoabdominal nerves. So that was all the atypical nerves. The typical nerves, the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth intercostal nerves, are typical because, remember, they keep their respected intercostal space, and they have the typical branches of the intercostal nerves. They have the motor branches for all the muscles in the corresponding area. They have the lateral cutaneous branches, which, remember, divides into the anterior and the posterior branches. And the anterior cutaneous branches, which also divide into medial and the lateral branches. And they also have the collateral branches, which uh, course along the superior border of the inferior rib to innervate structures like the intercostal muscle, parietal pleura, and the periosteum of the rib. So that was all I had for the intercostal nerves. The last nerve is called the subcostal nerve. This nerve is the last and the largest of all the thoracic spinal nerves. For the most part of its course, the nerve follows the inferior margin of the 12th rib running together in a neurovascular bundle with artery and vein. Then it passes in front of the quadratus lumborum muscle and pierces the transversus abdominis muscle. On its course, the subcostal nerve give off several types of branches, which are similar to the intercostal nerves. It gives off muscular branches, which innervates the muscles of the abdominal wall, including the pyramidalis muscle, internal oblique, external oblique, and the transversus abdominis muscle. It also has the lateral cutaneous branch, which pierces the internal and the external oblique muscles and run towards the gluteal region. It has a collateral branch, which is also similar to the intercostal branches. Uh, this nerve innervates the parietal peritoneum and the peripheral part of the diaphragm. It also has the anterior cutaneous branch, which, you know, is a terminal branch. It terminates in the anterior portion of the abdominal wall, supplying the skin over the lower abdomen, uh, or the suprapubic region, and the inguinal region. Now, what's special with the subcostal nerve is that it also gives off a communicating branch. A communicating branch is a branch that merges with the iliohypogastric nerve to help form the lumbar plexus. Alright guys, so that pretty much covers the thoracic nerves. Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. If you enjoyed, learn something from it, please remember to like, comment your favorite moment, subscribe, turn on those notifications. If you're looking for other ways to support, go ahead and check out the link in the description box. Have fun y'all, peace.